Did you know that Eleanor of Aquitaine was a queen, not just once, but twice? Stick around to learn more. Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today's video is all about the incredible High Middle Ages Duchess and Queen Eleanor of Aquitaine. Don't forget, the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel so you don't miss out on any new uploads. If you like my shirt, you can find this design and a bunch more on our shop at worldhistory.store or you can follow the link to it down below. Eleanor of Aquitaine was an impressive and powerful woman during the High Middle Ages. Not only did she own the land of Aquitaine, a large chunk of southwestern France at the time, but during her life, she was the Duchess of Aquitaine, Queen of France, and then Queen of England. She was known to be beautiful and well-educated, and of her ten children from her two marriages, three of her sons became kings. Stick around to learn all about this incredible woman from medieval history. The Middle Ages or medieval period spanned from the 5th century to the 15th century and it was during the High Middle Ages between 1100 and 1300 that Eleanor of Aquitaine lived, ruled and died. Her exact birth date is unknown but it was around the year of 1122. She was born to the Duke of Aquitaine, William X and Honor de Chateau and her grandfather, William IX, was a famous troubadour and warrior whose love of literature was inherited by Eleanor. As a young girl, Eleanor was skilled in Latin, sports like hunting and hawking, as well as domestic skills such as weaving, spinning and keeping the accounts of a household. By 1137, when Eleanor was around 15 years of age, her mother, her younger brother and her father had all died which left the enormous territory of Aquitaine, which spread from the river of Loire to the Pyrenees, to Eleanor. William X knew the precarious and frankly unsafe position Eleanor was going to be put in once he died, since heiresses were often kidnapped for their land. So, while he was dying, he sent his courtiers to the King of France, Louis VI, to ask for protection of Eleanor and to help her find a good husband. Three months later, Eleanor was married to King Louis' son, Louis VII. Louis VII was never meant to be king, and was groomed for the clergy, while his older brother Philip was the heir. However, when Philip died in 1131, Louis VII became king, even though he wasn't trained and had no experience, and pretty much grew up in a monastery, which meant that Eleanor became queen. Luckily for quiet and somewhat submissive Louis, Eleanor was a worldly and outspoken woman with experience in travel and had most likely heard the tales of her grandfather's adventure in the Crusade of 1101. When Louis accepted the position to lead the Second Crusade, Eleanor made it quite clear that she would accompany him. Although Louis was partaking in the Crusade as penance for the massacre of the citizens of the town of Vitry, Eleanor was there for a grand adventure and brought along 300 ladies in waiting. Even though the troops recognised this, it seems that they still respected her and saw her as a more able leader than her husband. Louis was a poor organiser and administrator and the Crusaders' lack of communication resulted at one point in their party becoming separated and the Turks ambushing the rear, where Louis was. He only got away because he hid in a tree and was dressed like a cleric. Slowly, Louis's awe of his wife turned into resentment, and after the crusade and the two daughters Eleanor had with Louis, their marriage was annulled on the grounds that they were third cousins, but actually, they just no longer got along. Mere weeks after the annulment of her marriage with King Louis VII, Eleanor married Henry, who at that point was Duke of Normandy. Henry then became King Henry II of England in 1154, two years after their marriage, and Eleanor became a queen for the second time. Although younger than Eleanor by at least 10 years, 
Henry was not as easily controlled as Louis was, and they were constantly fighting. This wasn't helped by Eleanor's tendency to surround herself with poets and artists that Henry had no use for, and to pretty much just ignore Henry's tantrums as much as possible. Eleanor channeled her energies towards raising the eight children she bore to Henry, and through her patronage of the arts. She knew that she could wield greater power and influence than Henry if she arranged advantageous marriages for her children with foreign nobility. So that's exactly what she did. In around 1170, Eleanor moved away from Henry in England to her homeland of France and filled her courts once again with poets and artists. Eleanor addressed administration matters, heard grievances and entertained guests. And it was during Eleanor's time in Poitiers that she had a profound influence on the development of the concept of courtly love and chivalric poetry. Courtly love is a genre of poetry elevating women's status to objects of worship and devotion at a time when women were generally viewed as property, while chivalric poetry was an expression of this genre featuring noble knights who served their lady without question. The best known examples of this poetry are the tales of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Eleanor, Marie de Champagne and other high-born ladies are said to have held courts of love where they discussed questions like whether true love could exist in marriages. They thought not. And what constituted love? Although scholars continue to debate whether these courts actually took place or if they were simply a literary creation of poets of Marie's court, like Andreas Capellanus. Either way, the concept of courtly love still influences poets and songwriters in the present day. The modern day love song, in which a speaker expresses devotion to a loved one, is a continuation of the courtly love genre. Three years after leaving England, Eleanor and Henry's younger son, also called Henry, how original, I know, rebelled against his father, and the revolt lasted 18 months and cost many lives. Eleanor openly supported her sons, and for this, after the revolt, Henry arrested her in France, essentially kidnapping her in secret, and imprisoned her, his wife and queen, for 16 years. She spent this time reading philosophy, and was only released when Henry died in 1189, although her son Henry had also died by this time too. Since the younger Henry had died while Eleanor was locked up, her son Richard I became King of England, and Eleanor became Regent. Eleanor knew she wouldn't have as much resistance from Richard as she had with her husband, and when the King went off with the Third Crusade, she was happily left in charge and with far more freedom than she could have ever hoped for. She jumped right back into her political manoeuvrings, as if she hadn't been imprisoned for 16 years. And although she was regent, she still signed herself as Queen of England. Eleanor knew her energy was best spent not on the Crusades, but on regaining balance and control over England. While on crusade in 1192, Richard was kidnapped by Henry VI of the Holy Roman Empire. Yeah, I know, another Henry. During this time, Eleanor kept the English nobles loyal to Richard and raised his ransom, and then delivered the funds herself to Austria to bring her son and king home. Richard reigned for another five years until he died in battle in 1199, and Eleanor's son John took the throne. And for a peace treaty between France and England, Eleanor travelled to Castile and brought her granddaughter, Blanche of Castile, to marry King Philip of France's son, Louis VIII. Now it was time for Eleanor to retire, and in 1204 she died of natural causes at Fontvaux Abbey. Although the peace Eleanor worked for between France and England broke down even before her death, her influence lived on through strong, independent women like her granddaughter Blanche. Her influence continued after her death, both as a role model to other women and through the poetic tradition that she inspired. Can you think of any other women from the medieval period who exercised a similar amount of power, whether it was political, religious or social? Let us know down in the comments below. 
Do you have a woman from history you'd like us to cover on this channel? Let us know who you'd like to see and why down in the comments below. Don't forget if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our new videos every Tuesday and Friday. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organisation, so if you'd like to support our work, you can head to our Patreon via the pop-up in the top corner of the screen or via the Patreon link down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon with another video. Thank you.